And our title of this today is The Importance of Watching. We're going to read verses 34 through 38. The word says, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with perishing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who do on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet. Then early, last verse 38, then early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. (laughs) When I was reading this, I thought about um, a song we used to sing. It says, Watch ye, therefore, you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. Amen? And sometimes, uh, even as believers, as believers, rather, we, um, we lose focus. We lose focus, and we start to get caught up in things. You know, and just like the words say, we get weighted down. You know, and and just so caught up with the things of this life, we forget our purpose and why we're here. And the one thing about Jesus, and he's and he's the one that we're supposed to be following. He is our example. The one thing about him is that he never forgot his purpose. He never forgot the reason that he was here. Amen. And sometimes we get so caught up in in the things of this life and what we're doing and the things that we have to do, and we know that we got to work while we're here. We know we got to keep it moving. We know there are some things that we have to do, but we are supposed to live our lives in in a sense detached from these things, that these things don't take hold of our hearts and cause cause us to be off focus while we think that we're yet walking in Christ and don't even realize that we've been derailed by all that's going on. We don't even realize. We still think we're making good steps in Christ and we've been derailed because this happened and that happened and I got to do this and I got to do that when all we really have to do is relax and rest in God and trust God for some things and we won't be so easily moved. These things won't cause us to walk up out of Christ when we think that we're walking in Him. We've already moved outside. But the word says, take heed, lest your hearts be weighed down with charity, drunkenness, the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. You know, when I'm reading this, I thought about the, the, the ten virgins. You know, they had five of them were, were wise, and the Bible said five were foolish. And so when, when the bridegroom came, they weren't ready because they were all focused. They were doing whatever it is that they wanted to do, you know. But we gotta, we gotta be watchful all around us. We gotta be watchful because the enemy he'll walk right in there, take your eyes off Christ, put them on everything else, and we can, we we won't be ready when the Lord should come for us. And this is what we're striving for. We need things in this 
in this life to get through on this journey, we need strength. And so when, when it seems like our strength is seeping out, we can go to God, and God will help us through. So we don't have to go on with an empty vessel. We can be full, full of the Spirit. Yeah, you're going to have some down days. You're going to have some off times. But that's not your dwelling place. That's not my dwelling place. And when you realize where we are, we quickly recover and come back, get back on track. And don't get so caught up with the things of this life and let that day, that very important day, come and catch us undone. Amen. Anybody? Amen. Amen. I was just thinking about how you said in, in um that word and I, I just I just took and looked that up. Um I, I don't recall ever looking it up before. Uh, verse 34, how it, it says, down with car- carousing. Uh, but that word literally means to come down like off a hangover. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, to be hungover and, 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 and out of sorts and just knowing that, hey, that you're, you're not even prepared. You know, it's, it's, it's basically let your heart be weighed down with carousing, but but bottom line is, lest you be unprepared. So take heed to yourself, lest you be unprepared for for Christ, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, for that day, you know. Um, so I just I just wanted to throw that in and thought that was um, really interesting. You know, again, I had never looked that word up, but um, amen. Amen. And you know, I've never um, never been a drinker, so I don't know. I just know when people talk about. Um, hangover. So, uh, that's your testimony, Apostle. Tell us how it feels to come off a um, like one of those. How you well, feel come off? I can say, you know, I've I've, I've had some uh, some some really bad hangovers, and some days, you, I mean, you know, you don't drunk too much, but a bad hangover. Uh, or really make you want to, you know, those those times that you really want to, that you pray, God, I, I ain't going to do this no more. <laughs> Me, y'all put this one. <laughs> I ain't going to do it no more. But I, but there's a headache. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure people, people body, bodies are different. But, you know, I mean, um, a headache, you don't want to move. You know, you don't want to open your eyes. And, um, you know, like I was saying about being prepared, you're not you're not prepared for anything because you're hung, you're, you're you're hung over. It's you know, um, and again, I can I can go on and give you know some symptoms of of, of what a hangover feel like, but but ultimately you just you 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 you, you you're not prepared. You, you can't do anything that that you would even want to do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just can imagine, and so I'm looking here. Listening to you, I started looking here in the Amplified, and let's listen how it reads. It says, but take heed to yourselves and be on your guard, lest your hearts be overwhelmed and depressed, weighed down with the giddiness and headache and nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness and worldly worry and cares pertaining to the business of this life and let that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. So in other words, when we get right there, where's your strength? Where's your strength to keep moving? Because first of all, you got to nurse that headache and all that bad feeling that you have so you have no strength. What if, what if there was a major battle in, in your life? Right at that time, and we we have no strength to fight. Amen. So there there's there's a, a need, and it is very important that we remain watchful. Don't just don't just take this journey and 
and and just you know your mind going every which way. You don't even really know where you're going. You don't know where you're headed. You don't know where you're stepping at. You, you know, sometimes people walk. You know, I tell Joy she walk sometimes. She step all on my feet. She act like she ain't felt nothing underneath her feet. Stepping on mine, you know. And some people we we live our lives just like that. We don't know where we going. We just stumbling, you know. But but we have someone that cares about us, you know, Amen. and finding us to be watchful. Amen. Anybody Amen. else think they want to say about you? Yes, I would like to just, just name me out with Sister Howard and Jacksonville Father. It says I would like to share a few words. If you if you have never formally asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, or maybe you're going cold towards the Lord and need to redeem your life, I invite you to take a minute to do that now. The Bible said today is the day of salvation because tomorrow is not guaranteed. You may not have the opportunity to make up this decision later, so don't put it all. Pray this simple prayer and ask Jesus into your heart. Lord Jesus, I repent all of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and watch me clean and make you, my Lord and Savior, thank you, Jesus, for saving me and making me a part of your family of God. Help me to follow you in all of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you pray this simple prayer, the Bible says you were born again. That just means that you have a brand new life in Christ. You are no longer separated from God and sin. Jesus paid the price for all of your sin, your past, present, and future. So you can be in the family of God. The Bible also says you are a new creature in Christ. You may not feel in the temple at first, but at your continual walking with Christ, you will gradually become more like him. Amen. 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 Did we hear that? Amen. And I was listening to her when she said, you may have grown cold. Because sometimes we we just march on like we think we feel um, hot and, and warm and fervent toward the God toward God and really don't even realize, it's like I said before, that we've grown cold. And so sometimes repentance just needs to take place. Amen. A very important thing, amen, that we repent of our doings. Amen. And, and, and come back to God. I just would like to say I thank God I moved in my home last Wednesday. And it was in silence, but I kept holding on God. It taken a year for me to get in here. But I began to call on God. I talked to him all through the night. Every time I bet my eyes, I would say, God, help me. You can't do nothing without God. And I want everybody who is listening today, you put God first. Put him first when you wake up in the morning. The first thing that you open your mouth, you say, Thank you, Lord, for letting me see this morning. Thank God all through the day. Not some time of the day. You will have to praise him all through the day. Call on him when you go out and out door, when you go into the bathroom, when you wash in your face, you say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God wants you to praise you and give him the thank. He wants you to say, Lord, I love you. I thank you. He wants you to do it. Not sometime. All through the day, you got to praise God. Because he's the only one. 
Nobody but God and let me tell you something. God is real. He's real. He is real. And I just thank God for everything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Mother Howard. Amen. The word says, watch therefore and pray always. Not sometimes, but always. And pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. So we're to watch and pray always. Don't give up, amen, that we may be counted worthy, the word says. And that we'll be able to um, to escape all these things that will come to pass. And we already know, amen, there, there are a lot of things. This is talking about the day of the Lord, I believe, but... There are things that are happening now, and people are affected by these things, but it seems like to me that the righteous, the people of God, the believers, yet stand fast. So we have we have some great benefits in being in Christ. Yes, you no. have to be watchful. Don't, don't take nothing for granted. But Amen. Watchful. Think about our life living, where I am in Christ today. Think about what's on my heart. All that I'm going through, the things that I'm faced with, every situation and and everything that's going on around our lives. You got to be watching. How do these things affect me? How, How do I react when this happens? Am I watchful? Am, am I watchful for my soul's sake? Because this is not the only life that we're going to live. So we got to be watchful. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have to have a pacemaker and possibly a heart there around the 15th of this month, but I'm not worried. Because I know that I'm in God's hands. So I want you all to pray for me. Yes, ma'am. Anybody Amen. else? Anything they want to say? Amen. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, li- Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, keeping in line with the, with the lesson and um, knowing our purpose, I had a couple of days when... I, you know, am down on myself because of the condition, my physical condition. And um, if I'm not careful, then I can, I can go, I can slump into my problems and not recognize who God is. And I know um, the analogy was used uh, about having a hangover. I, I have never had, I never drank either. And um, so I don't know what a hangover is. But I have indulged in something and lost my way. And it could be as simple as um, overuse of, of sugar, because I'm, I'm a sugar person. And sometimes when I overindulge in that, and then I have to come back like, how did I get here? How did I go past what I know is right? So mm-hmm. the thing that I have to do is, um, like um, like you said, Pastor Clement, I have to to think about what my purpose is. And so when I think about my purpose, and I know that it's aligned with God and it's not in line with his word, then I'm back on track. But there are some times when we, we can lose, lose sight of what's important. So I think that is a um, very uh, appropriate lesson, and I really appreciate it because I can apply it to my situation in my life. Amen. And I know good where you're coming from right there, amen, because we can get, even get drunk on the fact that I can't do this and I can't do that no more. It's this hard and that hard, and we can get, we can get drunk on just that. <laughs> amen. So thank you, um, Sister Sharon Apostle. Amen. 
I mean, just hearing hearing the the the, the, the title of, of of this message and um, the importance of watching and and then reading the scripture saying it says, but take heed to yourself. So again, that's 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 the mirror. That's 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 him putting the mirror in front of us. Take heed to yourself. So let me look at myself. And then he goes on to talk about these other things. Um, uh, again, let, let your hearts be weighed down with carousing, and drunkenness, the cares of this life, and that they uh, come on you unexpectedly. Uh, but I, I, I love how, how he comes in that 35th verse. He says, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. And the thing is, is that we 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 – we have a tendency to say, well, I'm just living my life. I'm just doing life. It's, it's based on my relationship with God, and all I got to do is make sure I do what is just do do me. It's just do whatever I'm doing. But we don't we don't realize that 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 we can become a snare to somebody else. Not only that we can become a snare, it says that it will, for it will come as a snare, and we don't know who is snaring. But we don't we don't always know who's looking up to us, who's who's examining, you know, who's checking out our lives, how we walk in Christ, how we demonstrate Christ or whatever, but it says, For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Amen. So it, it will come as a snare. <laughs> so there there's a great need for us to to know that there is a way. There is a that there, there, there's a thing called holiness, there's a thing called righteousness, there is a way to live this life, amen, and it's in Christ, so um, we can't just, you know, just, just feel like, hey, I'm just, you know, uh, I like doing this, so I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I just like doing this, so I'm going <laughs> to, and we just keep doing whatever we're doing, but knowing that somewhere in there, conviction has come, but because we like it, we just keep doing it, or we just keep, you know, living like we want to live, but know that it, it, it will become, or it will be a snare to someone. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I was talking to someone, and <laughs> it kind of blew my mind that people think that all they got to do is just pray. Pray is, is a, a necessary nutrient, I call it. It's, it's very necessary. But why commune with God? They don't do what he say. You just gonna sit down and talk to him, and then when you finish talking to him, you go on and, and continue doing what you want to do. There has to be some some living. There has to be some giving up of some things. There has to be some putting on of some things. Not just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dealing with, uh, but there has to be some dressing and undressing. You know, we we learn over the course of of of, of noonday man, and you know that there we have to put on righteousness. You know, Apostle gave us something about church and with no church clothes. We got to put on righteousness. Yeah, you got to pray. You got to talk to God. But it's, it's, it's you got to do more. Then pray. You gotta, you gotta take charge of your life, so to speak, that you're on track with God, and you're obedient to His word. So you won't be dressed. Amen. Anybody? I was just uh, gonna go back to uh, Luke twenty-one and thirty-four, and as we discussed and talked about it, I just um, paralyzed is a word that seems to come to me. Um, let your hearts be weighed down with carousing, and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that they come on you unexpectedly. In other, in other words, you paralyze. You can't do nothing when that day come upon you. Not only do you know not, you don't know what to do, but even if you knew what to do, you would be paralyzed because you got you weighed down with all this, with all these other things that are going on. And um, so that's only 
That's the only comment I want to make. Amen. Anybody else? The Bible says, and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet. And when I was thinking about that, you know, a mountain is high. Amen. You know, and so he 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 was watching. The Bible says he taught during the daytime, but and I was thinking, you know, in the daylight he he was he was um, teaching, but then when it was dark. It was not always the, I'm sorry, <clears throat> sunshine. We're going to have some cloudy days. We're going to have some dark days, amen. So it means that we're going to have to bring ourselves up, amen. Bring ourselves up so we're able to watch, amen. You you can't, what can you see down in the valley? What can you see in the dungeon? we got to bring ourselves up. And you got to bring yourself above Whatever it is that you're going through, and yet remain watchful. Amen. Anybody? It says, yet early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Amen. Isn't anybody coming to hear the Lord? Amen. Does anyone want to hear the Lord, want to hear from him? Amen. And can we take what he's telling us? Can we can we take his instruction? Yes, Lord. Can we can we take his word and yes. apply it to our to our lives? Yes. Can we receive his word gladly in our hearts? Does anybody want to hear him? We say we're praying, but do you want to hear him? Amen. Amen. Our God is good. Amen. And that's our word for today, unless anyone has anything else to say. Amen. I just wanted to add that even as you, you know, as this this portion of Scripture finished out, you know, just as you read 37 and 38, and, and I'm just going to read it just, just, just to um, put it back into our hearing. Uh, it says, in, and in the daytime he was teaching in, in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called all of it, and and just as you said, to 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 rise above. But the thing, and and I say this to us, especially those in leadership, you know, uh, there's a great need to to deliver the word and give the word of God and share these things. Because remember, we're talking about watching. So as you pour out and pour out, there's a need to 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 to, to go higher and be filled again. Uh, because we're we're not called to be reservoirs or stagnant. You know, we're we're called to for God to feed us, amen, and then we're to go in and pour out. So here we find him pouring out, but at night he went up to the mountain, he went up higher, you know, and I think this is a, a, a you know, we can see this as symbolically as uh, he, he he went higher in Christ to be to be filled up, to be topped off again, because then right, it, it comes right back and says, then early in the morning all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. So here he is pouring out again. So he, oh, he's getting filled up and he's pouring out again. So uh, if we're not being fueled up, you know, we preach and we teach and we're doing this, but if we're not being fueled up, um, we can really be caught up in some of these other things because if, if we don't take the time to get fueled up, then we must be into the uh, affairs of the world, into caught up in, in drunkenness or carousing or, or all these other things. So, um, again, uh, the importance of watching. <laughs> Amen. That's it, Pastor Flynn. Amen. That's so good, Apostle. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, anybody else? Amen. So we're going to pray. Father, we thank you again today for um, being with us, God. You never leave us. And we're so thankful that we're on your heart. We're thankful, God, that you're looking out for us and that we can always come to you, God. And today, God, we... Um, Yes, if you're not being on that game. Excuse me? We present God that to you today, God. She's going to the doctor. And God, we're praying 
that they will find whatever this thing is. We know where, where it came from, from a testimony. We know how it all started. But, God, we know that you can bring it to an end because that's what you do. And we know you can bring it to an end. So, God, we're putting it in your hands. And, God, we're looking to you to bring it to an end that you don't have to deal with this thing anymore in the name of Jesus. And, God, we thank you for um, Mother Howard, God, and the, her um, input today, God, and instructing us, God. We thank you, God. Amen. And we're praying for her, God. She says she needs, has to have a pacemaker and a heart valve. But, God, we're praying that you be with those surgeons, that they administer the right drugs, and they do what they're supposed to do, that they don't mess around and cut something that they shouldn't. But, God, that you would guide them and, 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 and be with her, God, in the name of Jesus. And, God, we thank you for her even being on the line. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for that age, God. We thank you. Amen. Still traveling for God and has not um, taken a rest and gone into retirement. We thank you so much. But, God, we bless you for everyone that's on this line today and that have called in. Amen, and taking part. We thank you so much. We thank you so much, God, for our apostle sharing with us, God. We bless you for him today, God, and the knowledge that you've given him. We thank you in the revelation. We don't take it lightly, God, and we thank you so much for it. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 